Hey everyone, my name is Norman and welcome to my channel. And before anyone says anything, I am 17, I am not 25. Just because I have facial hair does not make me a full grown adult. Thank you very much. So today I wanted to do something that someone suggested I, you know, should do. And I was, you know, thinking about doing this for a long while now. But, uh, you know. Today, I will be telling you my top 10 Disney Channel shows. Now, mind you, I was born in 2003, so I'm a Generation Z baby, or a Zoomer, whatever you want to call me. But, um, I have different opinions, and, you know, that's okay. We're all allowed to have different opinions on what shows are our favorites, because everything is subjective. So, for example, someone who was born in the 90s may have completely different you know, opinions than me. Same thing with someone born in the 80s or even the 2010s. So, you know, let's try to be respectful of each other's opinions. Alright, number 10, I have Raven's Home. Now, um, I never really grew up watching original That's So Raven. Because, well, we didn't really have Disney Channel at the time, so I never watched it. The only time I ever watched That's So Raven, other than on Disney+, Plus, was in Guatemala whenever I visited. Uh, and uh, they were playing the reruns on TV, so I'm like, mm, that's That's So Raven. It looks kind of cool. And, you know, I've been watching some of the uh, best episodes, uh, according to IMDb, on Disney+. Plus, and, you know, it's a pretty good show. And uh, Raven is seriously one of the best actors, you know, Raven Simone, and also the character Raven Baxter. She's just so funny. <laughs> and um, what's it called? <sighs> Chelsea. Chelsea is a good sidekick. I was about to say, like, Annalisa, like, what's her character's name again? Chelsea, right? And uh, so, but. I think in Raven's home, they both shine like even 100% more because they, along, you know, their kids are the main focus. And so, also, I just like, like things that are more modern, like set closer to present time. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Um, yeah. You are, we are exceptional. At number nine, we have Ant Farm. Now, it is my understanding that a lot of people don't actually like this show. Um, and I don't know why. <laughs> a lot of people say it didn't make sense or it was just annoying. But, I mean, China, 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 or <laughs> China Anne McLean is a good actress. And she just brings China, her character, you know, another person who's named after their real life name uh she's just so funny and i just i don't know i like the cast i like the people like uh olive and fletcher you know the just like the friend group i i really like it a lot although like you know i do have issues like season three <laughs> like why did we have to have olive and fletcher together i mean they were cute sometimes but they didn't work together and i don't get like, the new school, which also looked like a hotel building to me, but, you know, it's my opinion. But I still think it was a good show, at least definitely in the first two seasons. Um, but, yeah. My favorite episode of Ant Farm is the Black History Month episode where uh, China falls asleep, I guess. And she's technically playing different famous uh, women, black women. And I don't know, I just, I, I like that episode a lot. At number eight, I have Livin' Maddie. Now, also, people don't like this show. You know, I get it. It's because, like, oh, like, it's new Disney, and it just, you know, it wasn't, I guess, good for a lot of people. And, you know, I kind of see where some people come from, as in, like, it's, like, really, like, kitty, and it doesn't, like, make sense sometimes. But, you know, I like the idea that, you know, as a twin, I'm always attracted to, like, these shows with, like, a twin. And uh, that, you know, Liv is, like, the famous one, the actress one, and Maddie's the, you know, sporty, athletic one. And I think that 
you know, Dove Cameron having to play two different characters on screen. It's just so impressive. And her acting, I know some people say, you know, the acting is trash, but I think her acting is pretty good. And trying, just trying to play two different, like, characters that are not the same. Or at least, you know, they're a little similar, but they're still not the same. And uh, I think, you know, she deserves big props for that. Especially when, like, in other shows like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, you have legit twins, Cole and Dylan Sprouse. And uh, just not the one actor, actress, you know, doing the same character. My favorite ships from the show were Liv and Holden and Maddie and Josh. But if you watch the show, then you know that none of them got together. You want to know why? It's because Diggy, 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 Diggy was the actor. I mean, I don't know his name, but um, apparently they were, he was dating Dove um, and uh, Disney or whoever decided that it was best that they, you know, stay, I guess, dating on screen and also off screen which doesn't make sense because Liv and Holden were really good together and Maddie and Josh were really good together and uh just also they provided really good reasons as to why Maddie and Diggy shouldn't have gotten back together and yet they got back together and so I don't know I think those like legitimately my only issues also I also didn't really like the season where they moved to California but um you know, I think it was a kind of good show, regardless of those issues I just mentioned, but yeah. At number seven, we have Jesse. Now, Jesse is a show I grew up watching. I actually kind of like most of the episodes because, you know, you don't have to take anything too seriously. A lot of it is like wonky stuff with, you know, the kids and, of course, Jesse, the nanny and Bertram. We stand Bertram. And uh, so, you know, I guess I kind of have like, you know, that sentiment of like, oh, yeah, you know, it's Jesse, right? Hey, Jesse. So, um. But that doesn't mean that the show does not have its issues. And there are a lot of issues in Jesse. And many people have pointed this out several times over the past few years since the show has ended. And uh, it's just, it's all about race. <laughs> the racial stereotypes that they have in this show, um, it's not good. It's, it's not good. And I can't believe, like, we didn't really notice it at the time. Or maybe we did. I... I Maybe coming from my family, I didn't notice it, but maybe some other people with their backgrounds did notice how offensive some things were. Like, Karan Brar, he is American. He does not have an accent in real life, but yet to sell that, you know, Ravi is an Indian kid or a boy of Indian descent, you know, he had to do an accent. And I don't know. I don't. I just don't feel like that was necessary and also, um, many people have pointed out that Zuri is the sassy black little girl. Uh, and, you know, they're not wrong. Zuri was very sassy. To be fair, that was uh, Zuri's entire personality, I feel like, in some episodes or even, like, a whole season. But, um, you know, Zuri is a nice character sometimes. Other times, she can act real selfish like the rest of the family because, well, you know, they are rich and sometimes they feel like entitled entitled to some things and uh you know that's just one of my issues with her uh emma definitely is like one of that like entitled uh stere not stereotype but maybe like personality wise and i don't know sometimes it just gets me very you know it's off-putting i guess from the show cameron boyce's character you know it sucks that we don't have him anymore, but I think he was a legitimately, you know, they're all good actors, but he, you know, he played <laughs> his role being Luke and stuff. Luke was definitely one of my favorite characters on the show, even if, you know, a lot of, a lot of the stuff he did was, you know, wonky or, you know, wacky or just, you know, shenanigans like him and his obsession with, you know, Jesse and like, you know, wanting to date her and stuff. And, uh, but, you know, I kind of liked his character. Um... Now, if there's one thing I've learned in 2020 is that nobody <laughs> is that huge of a fan of Debbie Ryan's acting.
Uh, but Jessie, uh, definitely not one of my favorite characters, but she's a good character, and I think she tries her best, and, uh, I mean, there, there have been, like, I think a few episodes where she's like, you know what, I, I, I quit, you know, I'm leaving, I don't care, blah, 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 and, uh, <laughs> if this was real life, I feel like someone like that, you know, with those, with that type of, you know, family would have, like, quit a long time ago, so, like, I don't know, she has patience, but I also think, like, I don't get, how come she was, like, always poor or, like, didn't have a lot of money or, like, she couldn't get anyone to date her. I mean, I don't think she was, like, that insufferable, but, I mean, she must have been getting at least a good paycheck working for the Ross family, right? Because, like, if Bertram was there, Bertram could have, like, worked for, I think, anyone else. He really didn't, <laughs> he, he didn't like the kids, and yet he stayed there, and so... I mean, there must be some, you know, money going towards them, but, you know, Jesse's still, I guess, having trouble doing stuff in New York City. I don't know. That was, like, the one running gag that I usually didn't get, like, how she's still having trouble, you know, you know, issues with acting and finding love in New York. I mean, there's definitely, you know, worse people than Jesse, so... At number six, we have Austin and Allie. Now, this is a favorite show of mine. And uh, I just like the <laughs> cast of characters. I like um, Austin. I like Allie. I like Trish. I like <laughs> Des. Des is honestly one of the funniest characters to ever come from Disney Channel. I mean, everything he says. I watched a compilation, like, maybe a year ago. And he's just, like, so funny. Now, uh, I think my favorite ship would probably be, you know, Austin, Allie, obviously, but the issue I have with that is also, it's big, that it was annoying, I think, at the time, at least for me, and I don't know, thinking about it right now, it's probably still annoying that the whole will they or won't they, they kept just, you know, breaking up and getting back together and breaking up while still being friends, you know, it's fine, you know, you can still be friends, but it's like, if you guys, like, really liked each other, I don't know what's the issue, you know, I... I guess, like, they kept getting pulled apart, but how come they just couldn't make it work for at least, I don't know, one entire season, I guess. And so, I guess that was really my issue, but, um, most of the episodes I liked, and, you know, I thought <laughs> the acting from most of the actors were, you know, kind of good. At least, you know, by Disney Channel standards, but, you know, that's just me. At number five, we have I Didn't Do It. Now, this show, I don't think a lot of people remember. It only lasted for two seasons between 2014 and 2015. And, uh, well, I just, I really like it. I don't know. I usually describe it as the Friends of Disney Channel. And uh, if some people don't even know what Friends is, it was a TV show from the 90s where, you know, it was like a huge group of friends. And, you know, just kind of hung out together and did things. And uh, I think that's, you know, kind of what this show is, at least for me. I kind of like the characters that were in it, like Lindy and Logan, another pair of twins, although they aren't legitimately twins, and uh, their friends, Garrett, Jasmine, and Delia. And uh, I don't know, like, there's, like, different personalities that go in the group that, like, they just fit so well together. But, uh, you know, I think it was swept under the rug uh for the, when it was airing at the time on Disney Channel um my favorite ship from the show is Jasmine and Logan because it's like I, like I I love friends to uh lovers like or like the fake dating like to all the boys of love before type uh where it's just like it's so good and it's like they're they're fake dating to like make one of their exes jealous and then like they like start to fall for each other but the other one doesn't know and the other one doesn't know and so it's like oh like you know i guess it was like fun to do uh, you know this with you and you just want to see them get together and then they don't but then at you know, the end they do and i'm so glad they actually did get together at the end because the show was canceled after the second season so at least we got to like, have some closure with that but um you know, I think my only issue with the show was that it was canceled. I don't 
I, I could, this is like one of the shows I can rewatch over and over again. I don't, I don't have an issue with that other than it was canceled. Not to mess with the balance of things because everything is not what it seems. All right, controversial opinion, but at number four, we have Wizards of Waverly Place. Now, I know Wizards, you know, a lot of people grew up with the show and Selena Gomez and, you know, the whole shebang. But, um, you know, I like Wizards, but there are definitely other shows that I feel like I can, like, rewatch more or like more. Of course, like, the whole aspect of, like, magic was, you know, intriguing to me. I like, you know, their little <laughs> wands and stuff. Just, like... Shows when I was little, they they had like a whole lot of stuff like, oh, I want to be on there, I want to be on uh, the TV set, I want to use those wands and stuff. I wish magic was real, but alas, you know, we're not there. But um, yeah, I just found the show kind of cool. Um, my favorite my favorite ship, of course, is you know, Alex and Mason. But um, I don't know. I I don't like that. Sometimes the show was too Alex centric. You know, of course, like they had episodes to max and justin but you know alex while she was the star of the show and she's you know selena gomez was a good actress like you know sometimes i wish they had more time for you know maybe max and justin or maybe deviated uh away from uh mr and mrs russo and maybe gave some time to even just harper 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 really was just like the best friend of Alex and I feel like sometimes we didn't get like a whole lot of episodes that centered on the other main characters of the show and so uh, I think that was like really my only complaint but yeah Wizards is a good show you know still holds up especially 2021 all right Number three is Casey Undercover. Now, I know Zendaya's first show was Shake It Up. And for some reason, people prefer Shake It Up more than her other show, Casey Undercover. But um, I'm about to tell you why Casey Undercover is the better choice. Now, I did end up watching, you know, Shake It Up when it first came out. But, you know, I don't... That's not... The, the rewatch ability, I guess, if that's even a real uh, word is not that high up for me other than uh, rather than like you know Casey undercover was like in this show Casey or Zendaya right she's like the main star not having to share anything with like Bella Thorne she acts her butt off in the show of course in speaking in Disney Channel standards she you know is a teenager she goes through the some relatable things like oh like studying and not being able to have time for friends but of course entirely different reasons because she's a spy she's a family spy and i just think the whole aspect of like being a teenage spy kind of like how uh is interesting kind of like how hannah montana being like the secret superstar was kind of like a whole aspect for that show and what got a lot of people interested um my main issue with the show is that it's underrated i don't know <laughs> why people don't like the show or haven't you know watched it or caught on to it but it really is a good show and you know when the show ended Zendaya was already a what 21 year old 22 year old she didn't have to be on Disney Channel anymore I don't get like why she stayed especially when Disney Channel did not give her a lot of good roles especially with her two movies Frenemies and Zapped but um, apparently, I think I read this a few years back, uh, that Zendaya stayed because she didn't see a lot of representation on Disney Channel, especially black representation. And so she wanted to produce a show that had a main, you know, black family as its cast. And I think, you know, she really delivered on that promise. The main cast, of course, is black and she has her little you know her best friend Marissa who is white and so I think it's a pretty good show especially for representation and you know tongue in black history month 
terms which you know february which it is right now 20 february 2021 uh, i think it's a show that a lot of people should check out you're gonna love who you turn out to be hanging there baby all right at number two we have good luck charlie which i think is one of the best shows uh of all time on disney channel it really is not just like the normal family sitcom but you know it has like funny characters and i think a lot of stuff uh that makes a good show is the, you know funny relatable characters that you know it's not like a too offlandish concept like being a super spy or a superstar or being able to do magic or being able to see the future i think i like having a normal I mean, I mean, of course, like, normal characters would be more relatable to the average viewer. So, I, I can see why Good Luck Charlie was also a very popular show. But, um, yeah, no, the acting was so good for, like, all the characters and the, you know, Bridget Mendler and Jason Dolly. It's just, those are props for everything. You know? So, uh, the actress that plays Charlie, like, she was young, but, you know, she was also so funny at her role um i think my only issue with this show is uh teddy and spencer i don't know i just really like teddy and Bo in season four and that i don't like that teddy and spencer got back together sorry not sorry i don't know just like someone who cheats i think repeatedly is not you know a good role model to for disney channel and like the message that oops was sending that you know it's okay as long as you know like you love them and stuff like no and that's like literally like one of the only times i didn't agree with teddy because it's like he actually made you very upset and you're gonna still get back together i mean you even made like that whole song of skylar calling him a two-timing pig and so <laughs> i don't know that's just like my only issue with good luck charlie that's it i think other than that the show's four seasons were phenomenal and uh i really like the crossovers too i like the crossovers with any disney channel show because like it's just like nice seeing more than one show like interact and it's like also like like the mind blowingness of like oh my god like they exist in like this one entire shared universe so uh i think that was uh that's it for good with charlie <laughs> And finally, we made it to number one. So, my number one show of Disney Channel is Andy Mack. And uh, I think if you're subscribed to my channel, you wouldn't be surprised by that fact. Andy Mack came out when I was in middle school, or at least when I was finishing middle school, and it ended when I was like halfway done through high school. And, uh, I don't I just love this show so much and if you guys didn't know it is made by the same person who made uh Lizzie McGuire which is I think is why I like it so much like the newer generation has Andy Mack to grow up with while the older generation had Lizzie McGuire and uh you know some people will say that Lizzie McGuire is better than Andy Mack and I would say that Andy Mack is better than Lizzie McGuire but I also am just like a huge fan of like drama <laughs> like I love telenovelas and so this is like a whole dramedy show and I just I don't know I, I love I like drama but um I've heard a lot of people say that the show is too dramatic and I think that's true sometimes it does get like very dramatic for sometimes no reason at all but um you know what I can just brush aside those issues because everything else that the show has going for it literally just blows it out of the park. I don't know how to say this already other than what I've said in my compilation videos, but Andy Mac is so good for representation of different races, of religions, of different lifestyles. I just... You know, it's it's just good. I, I don't know how else to describe it. I like the uh the family dynamics of like having like oh like here's the older mom the mom and the sister or the daughter <laughs> like uh, not not me getting confused by the whole plot twist but yeah 
um just the show broke a lot of barriers or a lot of ground for disney channel that it hadn't i guess seen in a long time like for example we have two canon gay characters in the show and one of them is a main character like he's not just a one and done type deal cyrus goodman is a legit main character and you know i couldn't be happier or prouder that this show of course was the one to do it because i mean why not this show it literally has done so many other things especially a, not a you know chinese american uh main lead being for a show when you know we don't have a lot of asian leads other than let's say brenda song and the sweet life of zach and cody and the sweet life on deck playing london tipton and then of course uh bizarre Vark, which is a show a lot of people don't want watch or don't even like but um <laughs> olivia rodrigo was a main actress in that show alongside madison hugh or who, or I'm sorry, I'm probably mispronouncing the last name, but, you know, those were two Asian, you know, lead actresses that, in a Disney Channel show, and I think uh, Disney Channel has been lacking a lot. If you just, like, look back at a lot of their shows, representation for legit, like, every other race that isn't white, you know, in Andy Mack, you have Andy, who is Asian, you have Buffy, who is black, you have... um cyrus who is jewish that's jewish representation and we men you know everybody else usually like a christian and uh so i don't know i just the show broke so many barriers for a lot of things the main thing in the first episode was the whole teen pregnancy this the main thing in the first episode was the whole teen pregnancy thing which you know got it to be on headlines and stuff and like I said about Cyrus being gay, he came out three times on the show. It wasn't just like a one and done deal. He talked about it and not in other episodes and not just those like special episodes, I guess. He actually got together with someone at the end. We had a slow burn relationship. And trust me, that was not something I was, you know, too enthusiastic for because I just wanted it to like be done here and now. But slow burns are honestly some of the best types of relationships especially on you know shows and the one thing i love from andy mac is that there is no laugh track no laugh track at all no ah ha 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 no oh no ooh, no just nothing just playing out like a real show that would be on nbc or abc or cbs or like any of the network television stuff i mean some other shows that don't have laugh tracks are either not from the united states or I mean, from also Terry Minsky's other show, which was Lizzie McGuire, that didn't have a laugh track. Although I was rewatching it, rewatching like I watched it on the first time it aired. Um, I watched it on Disney Plus, and uh, they did have a lot of sound effects, which you know I don't really mind because you know Lizzie McGuire is more comedic than Annie Mac, which is you know more dramatic. And uh, you know what? I just I don't know. There's like a whole lot of things I've already said about this show, but I think my issue with the show is that they could have done things better, but I don't have a problem with that in the first place because, you know, they already did a lot of things that a lot of Disney Channel shows didn't even do. But my main issue, though, is that um it was canceled. I don't get why it was canceled. Um... Oh, I think, actually, I do kind of get it, but uh, I'd rather just continue blaming Disney for canceling it for no reason. Um, especially that since Bunked got renewed for a fifth season and Andy Mac couldn't even get a fourth season. And so, you know, it's just, ugh, I don't want to talk about it. Alright, so that was my top 10 Disney Channel shows. If you liked this video, press like. If you didn't like it, press dislike. If you want to comment, of course, go ahead. And uh, if you want to subscribe, please do. And if you don't, just, well, thanks for watching in the first place. Uh, have a good day and stay safe. Adios.